next speaker is Angela Renier, who is the executive director of UTSU and was involved in mobilizing students against the campus closure at U of T. She's also involved in the 24-7 committee, which is part of the Community Solidarity Network. This committee provides support for G20 defendants with transportation, building, food, trauma resources, and more. months after the mass arrest, many of our friends, colleagues, family members, and loved ones continue to face bogus charges for their participation in opposing the outrageous austerity measures of the anti-democratic G20 meetings. Community members came from all walks of life to mobilize together and to call for democratic and just alternatives to health, the environment, the rights of indigenous peoples, and public services. From peace activists, to laborers, to students, to community activists, we all came together to share connections between the varying social justice movements that we were working in and to find new ways of mobilizing together towards fair and just alternatives. We organized teach-ins, social events, art and multimedia events, and all sorts of creative mobilizations to share with our communities all of the ways that we oppose the violent, neoliberal agenda of the G20. But it appears as though all of these activities are being treated by the Harper government as too much of a threat. Leading up to the G20 summit, community organizers from all arenas were intimidated by security, by security officials, their homes were raided, communities were infiltrated, activists were warned about their participation in rallies and demonstrations, Individuals deemed by security officials to be leaders in their community were threatened that they would be targeted for participating in and mobilizing for the G20 related actions. Security officials also tried to limit spaces for organizing by convincing the University of Toronto administration to shut down the campus and for asking Ryerson University to do the same. supposed to be bastions of academic freedom, critical inquiry, and social justice? Yes. Yes. Not too far from where we are right now, students who mobilized against the U of T campus closure were also targeted for making spaces for mobilizing. Over 70 individuals were arrested while sleeping on a gym floor at the Graduate yes. Students yes. Union office. Yes. Only a block away were out-of-town security personnel cozily accommodated in residences that students were kicked out of. Shame! It's as if it's a crime now for students to organize on their own campus. And so while they try to continue to divide us and immobilize us with various tactics to squelch dissent, like bogus bail conditions, exorbitant legal fees, fear-mongering, trauma and intimidation, we will not cave to these attempts to criminalize dissent. We know our rights, and we know we are right. It's good to hear, it's good to hear that around 25% of these ridiculous charges were already dropped today. communities. I'd like to call on the poli Toronto Police today to print off a copy of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms for each of their employees. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to call on our government to free all defendants and to put the G20 on trial and the Integrated Security Unit on trial now. Yeah. Our next speaker is Mohan Mishra, who is a member of No One is Illegal. Known as Illegal is a community-based organization that fights for migrant justice and status for all. Thank you. Now it's amazing to see so many people out here today and it's just one more sign. All the people here today and the hundreds of people that were at court all day. One more sign that we're not going to stop fighting, that we're going to keep going and keep doing whatever it is we have to do until all the charges are dropped and every single person arrested at the G20 is released.
Let's talk briefly about what happened today at court. What happened today is that we saw the largest mass court appearance in Toronto history. Over 300 people appearing in court on trumped up bogus charges related to the G20. And since that, since that last weekend in June, we have been saying to every single person we can that those charges need to be dropped. But they're charges based on people's political beliefs and they're being targeted because they oppose the austerity agenda that the G20 leaders were in town to implement. And what we saw today was exactly what we've been saying. Over 75 people that were this morning facing charges are no longer facing charges. This is just one more. This is just one more example. One more admission by the Crown that they know that they have nothing, that these charges are bogus, that the police went completely overboard. They, uh, the unprecedented violence we saw was completely unjustified and the 75 charges that were dropped today is just one sign of that and we know that these charges aren't going to stick. We know that as we keep going, as we keep fighting and mobilizing, that more and more charges are going to get dropped and more and more of our friends and activists and community organizers are going to be found completely innocent. So while we're out here fighting today for all the charges to be dropped and all the detainees to be released, we need to remember that this sort of police violence that mainstream Canada was exposed to on that last weekend in June is something that poor communities and immigrant communities and marginalized communities in this city deal with every day, every single day. We know that in places like Six Nations and Tynanega, in places like Jane and Finch, in places like the downtown east side, people face this kind of police violence, harassment and intimidation every day. And while we're all out here fighting for the charges to be dropped, we need to recommit to redouble our efforts right now and say that we're not going to leave anyone behind. Whether you're facing detention and charges because of the G20, whether you're homeless on the east side and facing police harassment, whether you're an immigrant facing deportation at the hands of the CBSA, we are not going to leave you behind and we are going to keep fighting until everyone is free. At the same time, we can't forget why the G20 leaders were here in June, what they were here to do, and that was to impose an austerity agenda. What does that mean? Thank you, I completely agree. <laughs> so what does that mean? That means austerity for some. It means a tax on the poor. It means a tax on marginalized communities. Well, at the same time, the government is, continues to spend billions of dollars. Since the G20, where over a billion dollars was spent on security, we've seen another $9 billion committed to new prisons. We've seen another $16 billion committed to, we've seen another $16 billion committed to new fighter planes. At the same time as they're cutting public services, as they're freezing wages, as they're cutting jobs. And what does that mean for us? That means that the fight is just starting. Now, I want to try something here. Now, everyone, everyone who was there at court today, everyone who was out there to support, raise your hand and keep it up. Raise your hand. Now, everyone, everyone facing charges. Everyone facing charges or everyone that was arrested or beaten at the G20 weekend, get your hand up in the air. Now please keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Everyone who is part of an organization in Toronto that fights against poverty, that fights for immigrant rights, that fights for indigenous sovereignty, get your hand up in the air. And everyone here who's going to continue to fight against the G20 austerity agenda, put your hand up in the air. Turn it into a fist and look around and see the strength we have in this movement and know that we're going to continue to fight and we're going to win. Thank you. So, I know all of you are probably very interested in hearing what's happened in court today. So, we have Brooke. Craft, who is a member of the Toronto Community Mobilization Network, the Toronto Community Solidarity Network, and is also involved with the Community Justice Coalition and Prison Justice Organizing. She's going to give you a bit of an update on what's happening in the courts today and how you can get more involved. Um, today, 
uh, a bunch of us went up to court to offer support to the 303 people who were facing charges this morning. As was mentioned, <laughs> as was mentioned um, previously, many of those charges were actually dropped today, and I think that it's really important to think about what that means. That means that those people whose charges were dropped. The police and the courts know that they don't even have a shred of evidence. And it's not just those people, the people whose charges were dropped. It's lots of other people. There were also many people who were offered diversions, which basically means, if you're offered a diversion, that basically means that you um, can pay a little bit of money, $50, $100, and have your charges dropped, okay? Now, I don't know why paying some money Rhyming! <laughs> you were donated to the TCMN! Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They could pay it to the TCMN. You know, that would be great. They could pay it to the, 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 the fundraising, the support for the people who are still facing charges. But I just want to point out that many of those people actually didn't accept. They actually said no. Yeah, that totally deserves a round of applause. <laughs> they decided that they aren't going to accept because instead they actually want to take this to court. They want to show their They want to show how shoddy the evidence really is. They want to show how pathetic this entire security apparatus actually is and how ridiculous this entire court system actually is. And actually, just to talk a little bit about how ridiculous the court system actually is, there are actually a lot of people who are still facing charges. Many of those people, just to tell you a, a brief anecdote, came from Montreal on buses. They spent eight hours on the 401 getting here, just to be told that they get to turn around and come back in October to do the same thing over again. What a colossal waste of everyone's time and everyone's resources and everyone's energy for nothing. And I also want to say that this is actually something that a lot of communities face all the time. Imagine if you were, you know, a poor family living, living somewhere out in the suburbs and you had to come into court dates. You had to get in for your court date and they were just basically like, okay, turn around, come back in a month. You know, this is completely the way that the court system, the, the prisons, the police basically uh, cause people to... I'm sorry, hold on. <laughs> cause people to lose all kinds of time and resources in six days and all of these sorts of things, right? Like, this is not a one-time thing. This happens all the time. So anyway, all these people who were up there at court today, some of them got their charges dropped, some of them got diversions, some of them are coming back to court, and everyone needs our support. They all need our support. We're not going to stop until every single one of these charges is dropped. <laughs> They're not going to divert us. They're not going to divert our charges or us from the fact that we know that what they really want to do is take our attention away from what the government is doing. And they want to take our attention away from what the police are doing and did do during the G20. And we're not going to stop yelling about that and we're not going to stop organizing about that. And we are going to use this as an opportunity not only to support the defendants, but also to raise awareness about the court systems, about the police, about austerity measures, about all of this, and we're not going to shut up. No. So, just one more thing to say. Um, if you want to get involved, there are lots of ways to get involved in this city. There's, in, there's ways to get involved in anti-poverty work, uh, you know, support for First Nations communities, everything that all of the speakers before me have mentioned. If you want to get involved in direct uh, solidarity with the G20 defendants, uh, please get in contact with the Community Solidarity Network. There's people passing out flyers with the, the contact information. Uh, organize a fundraiser. Uh, do a public education event. You know, come out to our meetings and talk about how we can build this movement bigger and how we can use this as an opportunity because it is horrible that all these people are in court but we have to use it to make sure that no one forgets that this happened and to make sure that, ev that people continue to organize against the Harper government, against the austerity measures and against everything that's going on right now. Thank you. <laughs>